In 2014, our goal was to educate and inspire the next generation of young black leaders. Today, we are in search of the best of the best to reveal the secrets to success. Our belief is that we should teach the young early the things that we learn late. Our lives are shifting the culture. Our lives are changing the narrative. These are the Shine Hard Conversations. Welcome back to a season five episode of the Shine Hard Conversation. You guys know me, I'm your host, Johnny Bailey. And this week I'm in New York City with executive coach, Angelina Derisaw Cheeks. Angelina is an executive coach. She has navigated the business development ranks of companies like ESPN, Viacom, and currently she's the founder and CEO of C-Suite Coach, a firm that works with companies to engage and retain diverse millennials and diverse talent overall. So on today's episode, Angelina is gonna talk about some of her personal philosophies that have helped her become successful in life, and then also what it's like to work with C-Suite executives and some of the, the gems that you pulled from that experience. You have a very unique journey to where you are today. A lot of people don't know how your journey really began here in New okay. York. So talk about your childhood and what growing up was like for you. And I'm a native New Yorker, originally born and bred Brooklyn. Um, and it's changed quite a bit since I was growing up. Really? When I was growing up in Brooklyn, the areas that I lived in, people didn't even want to go to. I grew up in Bed-Stuy. My mom is an amazing woman, and she also was a single teenage mom when she had me. And I actually come from four generations of teenage moms. That was what my college essay was about when I was applying to college. And my mom had that fortitude and that just passion about making sure that I wasn't going to be generation number five. And it was very interesting just navigating that path of going from a community where I saw lots of reflections of myself mm -hmm. to a community where for many of my classmates, I was the first person of color that they mm -hmm. were meeting that wasn't a domestic. Let's talk about your career and how you got involved in the C-Suite Coach. I know that you started off at ESPN, and Viacom, what were those experiences like? Well, I really enjoyed the work that I was doing. I came into the media industry at a time when there was a lot of room for innovation. Yeah. Now it's so commonplace for us to be at dinner and watch television on our phone right. or watch content. Even Instagram just recently launched the TV product, yeah, right? Yeah, I saw that. Um, so it's very common for us to use our different devices to mm. watch and consume media. Right. But that wasn't the case when I was entering the media industry. It was still very nascent. So I was working on deals that helped us figure out how to put our content on digital platforms. Mm. And that was so exciting to me right. to just be a part of what was truly innovation for the industry. Yeah. So you were at that table trying to create strategies on how to move these companies forward. Yeah. And who are the right partners? Mm. So it was a fun time to be in media. Yeah. So why did you leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I really enjoyed the work that I did, but I was getting promoted. I was definitely growing. Right. And the I heard you like shot up the corporate ranks so fast. <laughs> I, I had some growth. I had some good growth. I really enjoyed myself and was able to triple my salary in just about two and a half years. Wow. Uh, and I enjoyed that experience. But what happened was the more that I was growing, the less I saw people that looked like me in the room. Right. And also the more people that looked like me were coming into my office and they didn't want to talk about, you know, how did you get that Snapchat to have MTV content? They wanted to talk about their bosses being really difficult or mm. the fact that they couldn't negotiate mm. even the most basic things that they should have access they to as an employee. They were seeking you out for counsel. All the time. Mm. And I realized that what my company was providing to talent from the realm of development yeah. really didn't always have a good strategy behind it and it wasn't really focused on helping diverse professionals grow. I see, I see. So maybe taking one step back into your college age. Oh, okay. What was the first <laughs> job you had out of college and how did that affect your trajectory? Yeah, so I had interned, I, I told you my mom was just very 
your strategic. Sh- strategic and also just made sure I was disciplined. She had me up even on weekend mornings. Like I see yeah. those memes about moms coming into the kid's room and I have like tra- traumatic flashbacks. <laughs> um, that was my mother. So I had started, as soon as I was 14, I was interning and writing for a newspaper. I'm now on the board of that organization. It was a nonprofit newspaper for New York City teens. All throughout uh, high school, I did either public policy training, some sort of program, or an internship. So by the time I was in college, I had already interned at Bloomberg, ESPN, HBO, Fisher Price, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I decided to get another degree. I went to Wake Forest University right. for my master's. So wait, where was your undergrad? My undergrad was Davidson College. Okay. Uh, Steph Curry with the shot. Every time he touches the ball, NBA distance three is there for Stephen Curry. That is correct. <laughs> um, and I was a political science major, so traditional liberal arts. Okay. And thought it could be good to balance that out with some business acumen, right. really get fortified in that. Um, and so I got a master's of arts in management at Wake Forest University, full scholarship. Really? Yeah. Very cool. So I know how important mentorship is, and the Shine Heart is all about creating virtual mentors and transferring knowledge to the next generation. How valuable has mentorship been to you, and who are maybe one or two of your mentors that have helped you along the way? When I think about that, I think of a few different things, because it's a theme that's been coming up a lot recently for me in conversations that I've been a part of. So on a personal level, my day-to-day go-to mentor is my mother. We have totally different career paths and trajectories, but from the standpoint of someone who I can truly trust to have good logic, always be in my corner, and also just a very smart strategic thinker. My mom went from being a teenage mom to now she is a PhD and an assistant superintendent. That's dope. But then I think that when you look at the scope of mentorship, it doesn't have to be always a same consistent person that right. you're meeting with every week or right. every month. Yeah. When you're setting up your own personal yeah, that's life. that's so like old traditional And like, you style. can have that and there's definitely value yeah. uh, depending on what stage you are to being a part of those programs. Right. I'm a huge advocate for strategic mentorship programming. But when you're thinking about if you're not a part of a program, do I have to go now find an executive that mm. I'm having a weekly catch up with right. or a monthly catch up with? Buying it, you lunch, buying you coffee. No, it that. doesn't have to be like that, uh-huh. right? It can be a combination. So I actually, to this day, still have notebooks. I met with every person I admired when I was at all of my companies. Right. But the point is when you get time with someone to just suck in whatever they mm-hmm. knowledge that they can share yeah. with you yeah. in that moment. Yeah. Be a sponge. Be a sponge. Ask them the questions. Come prepared, Mm. right? So what were they talking about last? What What kind of information is publicly out there? What can I ask that's different than they might not have heard? And what's actually going to make a difference to me and what I currently need? So sometimes I even come with a problem and say, what would you do if you were in this situation? And that's a good way to leverage a mentorship without having to put that pressure on someone to meet with you constantly. The other thing I heard recently at a conference was someone was saying Oprah was their mentor and she broke down what that meant. And she was like, I read everything she writes. I watch her. I look at how she presents herself, how she speaks. And you can be a sponge of someone without even knowing them. That's me. Yes. And and really, as you being a part of this platform, you're going to be so many people's virtual mentor. Oh, okay. I love that. Me personally, I haven't really had like a physical mentor that took it, take an interest in me along the way, but I've absorbed so much content from people like Jim Rohn, from Diddy, from mm. Eric Thomas gets me motivated. And I listen to their their stuff and read their work and I apply it to my life. Yeah. You know, so virtual mentorship is something that I'm very passionate about. And I think that it really is effective. People who I'm a fan of, I read their tweets, like I'm looking at their stories <laughs> and I'm just like soaking up. How do they look at problems? Mm-hmm. How do they create solutions? Yeah. How do they move? As you are a mentor and a coach, Ooh, yes. let's transition to talking about the C-suite coach okay. and what you are doing and how you're serving companies uh, in New York and beyond. Sure. So I partner with companies in a few different ways from offering coaching to individuals. So some companies will reach out to me to coach their top talent okay. to also designing programs. So that could be 
designing a mentorship program, that could be designing a coaching program, yeah. and also programming that helps develop leaders. So mm. done a bunch around personal branding, personal storytelling, right. skills that diverse talent really need. Mm. And a lot of times we don't get the focus on us when it comes to professional development in this way, right. because companies are using these like one size fits all solution. And it really doesn't work when you think about mm. Someone, for instance, like let's take my story, okay. having been growing up in bed sty and the things that I might deal with as a professional mm. and how to tell my story is going to be very different mm. than the coworkers I'm alongside. Right. And that might make me very hesitant to open up when mm. I'm not opening up then I can be perceived as not really caring about my work, not being engaged. Right. So we really need custom solutions that are catered to diverse talent right. to really make sure that we're right. preparing them to be resilient, be resourceful in situations, yeah. and also to find ways to comfortably engage. Mm. Because when you're seen as someone that doesn't engage, then that can be seen as someone that doesn't really care about your work. What is the primary barrier to entry that you see for diverse talent getting to the C-suite? Mm. Um, there's definitely an underleveling. That's a big issue right under now. Underleveling, what is that? That means to have skills where you could and should be at a higher level, mm. but for whatever reason, you're staying in your position for too long, uh, or you're taking a lot of lateral moves where that across the board isn't happening to your peers that are not diverse. So one thing that I'm seeing a lot more companies place emphasis on is looking at the trajectory for their diverse talent alongside the trajectory for their majority talent and see, is right. there a disparity in how long this group of people Stays at stay level. at their position versus another group? Yeah. Um, something else is we tap out, right? We leave our careers, which... For some of us, that's great. I mean, like everyone's raising their hand. I did I'm it. Out. I'm right? going to be an entrepreneur. I'm out of here. Yeah, and I, that's great. But I can. We can also talk about all of the challenges of entrepreneurship and how my first year I lived off of savings Listen. and my business didn't pop off year <laughs> one. It's year three now, and I'm doing really good. But it was two hard years of struggle, yeah, right? Same, same. So there's a lot of barriers for young entrepreneurs and the answer to challenges at work can't be we all quit our jobs right. because then we'll never see a c-suite that reflects right. us ever so why is having a diverse c-suite important oh there i mean <laughs> i can write a dissertation about this it's important yeah. because it's better business it's important because visibility makes a difference for the entire employee population Absolutely. it's important because you better serve your customers when you're reflective of the marketplace there's all kinds of studies that prove this i'm glad this is something that's being measured now right. uh, but it's truly important for us to have that kind of reflection yeah. part of the mission for shine hard is to create visibility yeah. so we feature diverse millennial leaders from all different walks of life and industries to show our peers that hey there are people that look like you doing amazing things and a lot of times if i see someone else do it I believe that I can do it too. That's really, really critical. I recently heard from an African-American woman pilot mm. and her talking about uh, going to a funeral of yeah. another black woman pilot just so she could see that the dream she had for herself as a child wasn't something that couldn't be accomplished. Mm. And so she said, I didn't know any real ones. I thought if I at least went to a funeral, I could see one. Make it real for Make me. it real. Yeah, we need to see reflections of yeah. ourselves to have our the idea of what's possible yeah. really expand. What's been the biggest challenge for you in your career thus far? You've been in the corporate world and now you've ventured into entrepreneurship. What, what's been the biggest roadblock for you? So I would say, I mean, funding is an issue. Yeah. Bouncing back, making pivots. When I started my business, I had an app that I spent a lot of money trying to develop uh, and it didn't work out. And you have to stay the course and find new ways to keep going right. even when that thing that you thought was a sure thing doesn't turn out the way that you want it to right. turn out. Pivot. That's pivot, pivot is important. Uh, so. Really for me, it's just finding new ways to be resilient when sometimes it is challenging to keep going. It has been the toughest thing, the toughest part. 
what separates people who have made their dream a reality and the people who are still trying to like figure it out? A few different things. How much you're willing to develop that dream and be honest with yourself and own it. But sometimes we don't even support our own selves. Mm. So we could be wanting to do something but keep excusing it away mm. like i shouldn't do this because i have a kid already i shouldn't do this because i'm too poor to do this and giving ourselves all the reasons for why right. our dreams shouldn't work yeah. one person i coached was an executive at a nonprofit and had a child and in our first session i just could tell she was talking about looking for a new nonprofit position and i was like something is off you know i'm very attuned with people's energy and in a matter of questions like moments i got to the point that she really wanted to act mm. and she had all these family commitments and felt like she couldn't because mm. she had to provide and we had to really be honest and say well what would happen if you owned your dream mm. the same way you were able to build this career right. and be successful could you do it in what you're really passionate about yeah right it's funny how we can get upset when people doubt us but we don't get that same irritation oh, yeah. when we doubt ourselves. Right. We we <laughs> get used to and accustomed to doubting ourselves. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. So for the young people that watch, we have high school students, college Ooh, students, okay. professionals, our peers that are watching this show and they're trying to understand how do I advance my career? How do I advance in the corporate world or maybe take that leap of faith to becoming an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone who's trying to do that and what's the mindset around being successful? So I would say to you, be a student of the business. That could sound maybe a little bit cliche, but it's not. There's constantly things I'm teaching myself, like even yeah. how to identify a good accountant. I have to read about mm. accounting. I'm always having to learn new things. Yeah. And that should never stop. If you want to be successful at anything, that means you're doing informational interviews. You're, we talked about being a sponge. You're a sponge for information yeah. with other people. You're putting yourself even in the rooms where it might be uncomfortable. Like, right. I don't care about accounting stuff. I don't care about legal stuff, but I have to force myself to get comfortable with it. Yeah. So even if I outsource that, Right. Um, which likely those things I would you have to know I, I'm knowledgeable it. enough that I'm not getting myself in a compromising situation right. that compromises my business exactly. so the same is the case in corporate and then the other big piece of advice I would say is speak up twice this week I was in rooms where I was the only woman that asked the question what and is each that of, like where I'm the only woman to ask a question yeah um well for me it's comfortable like i speak a lot i spoke to over six thousand people in person last year um so i will say it's definitely comfortable but also what always happens is afterwards i see a group of people that come to me and say i had that question or i would have asked the question but i couldn't formulate the words and they're mm. second guessing themselves and we have to just put ourselves out there mm. Uh, so I want to see more women, especially more people of color, raising their hands right. and speaking up. That's real. I think it takes a ton of courage to stand and speak, and it also takes a ton of courage to sit down and listen. Yeah. Angelina, I'm so grateful for having you on the show today. Thank you. I Thank you so much. I think you're going to inspire so many people, and what you're doing is, is huge for uh, minorities, huge for women, and it's very meaningful because uh, we need more diversity in the workplace. Thank you. So Thank you for having me. No, no doubt. No doubt. Um, let everyone know how they can find you online, yeah. anything that you have coming up or... Uh... Yeah, so uh, you can find me online by going to www.angelinaderasaw.com or www.thecsweetcoach.com. On Instagram or Twitter, you can find C -Suite Coach at, at C -Suite Coach and me at Lena Darasaw. Upcoming, all of it is there. I have some opportunities coming up for facilitators, for potential coaches, and also looking for an admin assistant for myself. Oh, interns, get her up. Paid, so. Oh, true. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole too. nother conversation. <laughs> well, you guys can find me, Johnny Bailey, at one Johnny Bailey. Of course, follow the movement at ShineHardFam. Visit ShineHardFamily.org. You guys know this movement is all about creating visibility, transferring knowledge to the next generation, and essentially closing the racial wealth gap in America. We need your support to do that. Please donate, please get involved. Check out the website for all the information around that. Angelina, thanks for having me. Thank you so much.